Merry Christmas! All right, kids, help us with the Christmas Eve countdown. Merry Christmas, everybody. It is so good to see you all. Will you stand with us as we sing some Christmas carols? Kids, I know you've been practicing these hand motions all month, so join us.
You may be seated. So Christmas Eve services are a special time of year here at Petra. Uh, we always pull, try to pull out all the stops and, and really go for that wow factor. Uh, I really enjoy working behind the scenes with the crew and, and seeing it all come together. That's right. And we're always trying to improve on the last year. And since we haven't done a drama in a while, we thought it would be a great idea to assemble the staff and hold auditions for a authentic, period accurate, just like you were there in the stable, retelling of the Christmas story. So, how'd that go? Caleb, take one. Hey Caleb, thanks for coming in today and reading for us. You're going to be reading a part of Gabriel the Angel, so whenever you're ready. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. I'm, I'm honored to be able to read for this part. Um, I, I really think we need a big musical cue just to establish the emotion and the mood of the scene when I enter. Well, um, we could consider that. But, you know, I think we had the more traditional thing in mind. What, what about my solo? Well, you do have that nice long monologue with Mary. I mean, that's a nice big part. Yeah. I'm talking about my guitar solo. Andrea, take one. Um, wait. I thought I was reading for Mary. Oh, well... Do you mind just reading for Elizabeth now, and, and we'll see how it goes. Do you know how old Elizabeth is, Ron? Well, uh, um... Do I look like an Elizabeth to you? Um... Uh, Andrea, I, uh, Andrea, um, we think you're a, a wonderful, wonderful performer. I mean, truly great. Uh, yeah. I think you're going to be convincing no matter what role you play. Uh, so I don't see a problem here. Uh, I think you're going to make a... Really fantastic, Elizabeth. Or we could get you the script for Mary. 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 Brian Fawelling, reading as Joseph. Take one. Mary! Mary, my love, let us be off to Bethlehem. We must make haste to the town of my father. Tarry not, my love, tarry not. For if we are to arrive uh, before this excuse child... Excuse me, Brian? Brian? It's Joseph, I like to say in character. If we are to arrive Joseph, before we... Joseph, excuse me, Joseph. Are you adding lines because we don't have time for all this dialogue? The writer doth protest too much, methinks. We'll sing your sons and daughters. Did you know that your baby boy... Wow. Which one of you guys wrote this? It's wonderful. Oh, well, uh, we pretty much just copy and pasted from the Bible. Well, you did an incredible job. I was moved. The story, the emotion... Well, I mean, we literally just copied and pasted from the Bible. Isn't that illegal? Um, uh, I think we have permission. Yeah. Can I be an angel instead? Rizzo, take one. Wait, I'm the donkey? <laughs> Ken, take one. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thirsty these days. That's right. Go ahead. Take your time. All right, Matt, take one. Oh. Okay, Matt, whenever you're ready. Just take it from the top. On you. Uh, you all right, buddy? How many people are going to be there? Probably well over 2,000, would you say, Ron? 3,000 both services. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's 
strong enough. Well, uh, I think he's got that whole shepherd terrified thing down. Matt? You all right, bud? Hey, guys. Hey, uh, we are super excited to be here to help you guys out on Christmas Eve. We? Yeah, we. Yeah, me, me and Vinny the Lamb. You know, this is actually the 10th anniversary of his big debut in the Christmas Eve service here, and... and yeah, I remember, but, uh, Gary, you're not a pastor here anymore. Is this going to be a problem? Gary, the sheep's got to go. Hey, you in the corner! Who put you in charge? Did I see Gary in that creepy sheep in the hall? Yeah. Yeah. I am not working with that sheep. Don't blame you. Security. <laughs> so I wanna no, buy no, 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 Kids, take twelve. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you one thing. No one's sitting on my back. Oh. <laughs> 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 Do you think the shepherds could uh, have balloons? I can write that in. <laughs> what is frankincense? I don't know. Seriously, guys, don't make me wear a tail. All right, who's next? I'm not sure. Let's see. Uh, oh, hey there, little fella. Uh, when did we get a dog on staff? I don't think we have one. What are you going to do for us? Uh, I'm not quite sure where we can fit you. Angel Choir? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> what part am I again? Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Not bad, kid. <sighs> Not bad at all. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, it's gotta be over soon. He can play a lot of instruments. But innkeeper, cast your eyes upon my wife. She is great with child. <laughs> You guys asked Andrea to be Elizabeth? What has Mary got that I don't have? She's a mother. I'm a mother. My kids love me. I'm warm and I'm caring. Oh, you got it. I told you. Hey! Oh! Hey! So I was thinking here, yeah, I was thinking I could play one of those wise guys in your play, your drama thing. Best work we've seen all day. I think we found our baby Jesus. Yeah. Thanks for coming in, Lester. It's so nice to have you back for Christmas. Thanks. Yeah. It's good to be here. Yeah. Hey, we wrote a special part just for you this year. So uh, whenever you're ready, you can go okay, ahead. Hey, let me see what you wrote. There isn't a cat in the Christmas story. Well, good evening, folks. We are so grateful that you are here uh, tonight. We just want to welcome you. My name is Brian Coles. I have the privilege of being the lead pastor here at Petra Church, and we just want to greet you. We are going to enjoy our time together tonight as we worship the Lord, as we celebrate Emmanuel, God with us. He truly is our shelter. Amen. I mean, we are so excited that you're here tonight. Just want to welcome you. We're going to pray as we kick off our evening to retell the Christmas story, to, to worship his name, and to enjoy his presence. Will you bow your heads with me as we pray? 
Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for sending a Savior to this earth to, to live a human life, to, to be able to understand what it means to live in a world of sin, to eventually go to the cross in our place as our substitute so that we can be right with you, so that we can know you, that we can walk with you. So, Father, bless uh, all the things that we do tonight. Would it bring great honor to your name? Would it touch our hearts? Would it inspire us to be reminded that you are always with us? You are Emmanuel, God with us. We pray that you'd bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you enjoy the rest of our show. Creator. Never changing. Holy. Jehovah. In the garden, he was near to Adam and Eve. But sin wrought an awful separation. Even so, he was with them. When the rain refused to cease, when the floods rose, he was Noah's shelter. Though age had taken its toll, in spite of a barren womb. His promises to Abraham and Sarah came to pass. He was El Shaddai, the Lord God Almighty. When oppression and slavery obliterated hope, he was rescue and deliverance in Egypt. He split the sea. A cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night. In the heat of the desert, he quenched their thirst. When hearts grumbled and food was scarce, he sustained them. At Sinai, he made his covenant, but the people strayed, shattered trust, incapable of staying faithful. Still, he remained with them. The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God. Slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. And so it continued, years of judgment and mercy, rebellion and faithfulness, exile and restoration. Through David's victories and failures, with Elijah on Mount Carmel, with Daniel in the lion's den, in the furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, from Egypt to Canaan, from Babylon to Jerusalem, he was there. His covenant, a shelter for his people. Their sacrifices, the only atonement for their sins. But God had a plan not just for Israel, his people, but for all of the nations. A way for all people everywhere, 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 to be made right before him. A new king, a savior, a messiah, Emmanuel, God with us. The world waited.
There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord showed around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. A glorious promise was fulfilled, heralded by blinding light and the awe-inspiring song of angels. Emmanuel was here. God with us. Our Savior, born that night. Not in a high and mighty palace with attendants to care for him or fine clothes to adorn him. Not even in a home or a humble inn. No room was to be found. His birthplace? A stable. And a manger, his bed. His mother? A virgin, just as the scriptures foretold. In a small and lowly shelter, fit only for animals, this miraculous birth ushered change into the world. God with us. The wonderful counselor was here. A mighty God, an everlasting Father, a Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, 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 God with us, refuge from sin and sadness, shelter from wrath and judgment, the Savior of the world. Jesus had come. As you read through the Old Testament, you'll find yourself stumbling across some poetry and some theologians even think the journal of a young man you might be familiar with, his name is David. He wrote a lot of the Psalms in the book of Psalms. And as we read through it, we see this very interesting Psalm that he writes, it's Psalm 91. And he says that whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This is David who grew up as a shepherd and then eventually became a warrior who ultimately, after being a warrior for a little while, became king. He had a pretty interesting life. As a shepherd, he would have known what it meant to look for shelter. You have all these sheep that you're responsible for, and the wind and the rain is coming. He definitely would have wanted to find a place for them to hide, a safe place. As a warrior, he knew what it was like to find shelter. He was constantly being chased by his enemies, and he would even hide in the rocks and, and hide all over the place just to get away from those who were pursuing him. And even as king, he found himself running for his life, looking for shelter, looking for a safe place. I hope that at some point in your life you had a safe place to run to. I remember that I had several of them. Maybe you had a tree house or it was your bedroom or maybe a friend's house or an attic or a basement. Just that, that one place that you could go to where the noise and the pressure of the world seemed to not be able to get through the door, where you could, you could kind of hear your own thoughts. It was a safe place. I remember playing hide and seek as a young child. Does anyone else remember that? Some of you are still playing that to this day. I was the youngest in my family and so as the smallest at that time, I remember walking into my bathroom and it, there was just a small sink with a small cupboard underneath it, but I, I remember realizing I could get in there. And so I pulled everything out from underneath the sink and I squeezed behind the, the pipes and then I pulled everything back in kind of as a shield and I closed the door. And every time I hid there, I won. That was my place, that was my safe place, that was my place to win, I was so proud of that place. 
And then one day, a few years later, when we went to play hide and go seek again, I went to my, my spot and I had grown. And something happened to the cabinets, they shrunk and I, I didn't fit in my safe place anymore. This was my spot, I, this is the place that I went to every single time, it was my safe place. I knew I would win if I could hide there, but I couldn't, something happened. And I could hear my sibling counting, ready or not, here I come, and I wasn't ready, and so I had to jump into the tub. I know it's embarrassing, such a rookie place to hide. I think my sister, when she found me, she pulled the curtain back, and she was like, really? I'm like, okay, I don't want to talk about it. All right. It's embarrassing even till this day. Have you ever lost your safe place? You know, I think over the last few months, and maybe even this last year, a lot of us have. We had those places that we went to, maybe it was a gym, maybe it was your work, maybe it was a coffee shop, and for some reason God has been stirring things up and there's been a lot of craziness going on in our world and for many of us, our safe place has been taken from us. And so where do we go to hide? Where do we go to rest? Where do we go to hear our thoughts? Where can we go where the ready or not, here I come of the world can't get in? You know, it's interesting that as we follow David's life, by the time we get to Psalm chapter 91, David has learned some things, and this is what he learned, is that shelter is not a structure or a geographical location, but it's a relationship with a person. You see, he says this in Psalm 91, he says, whoever dwells in the shelter of who? The Most High, shall rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Shelter is a person. Safety is a person, it's God himself, it's Jesus Come in the flesh so that you can know him. It's Emmanuel, God with us. And even our decorations tonight are not to look like a manger or to look like clouds, but it's to remind us that he is forever with us, covering us, keeping us safe. If you continue to read Psalm 91, you'll find this, that you don't have to fear, that he will send his angels charge over you, that he will protect you, that he will watch over you. Why? Because he is our shelter. You know, I've often wondered if one of the reasons why Jesus was born basically outside in a manger is because he is our shelter. They couldn't find a place for him to be born in because he actually is the greatest shelter of all time. He was being born. The shelter of all humanity was coming to cover humanity with his love and to cover humanity with his leadership and to cover humanity with his forgiveness. My question for you this evening is, do you know Jesus? Do you know that shelter and, shelter and safety are not a geographical location, but it's a relationship with God's son? Do you know that he will shelter you? He will cover you, he will forgive you, and he will protect you. We need that, I need that. He's changed my life, and I know that he's changed the lives of many people in this room. And so for those of you who are here today and you know Jesus, I hope that you're encouraged and you're reminded of the fact that Jesus came to love you. He came to forgive you. He came to cover you with his wings. He is our shelter. And maybe you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus. I can't think of a better night than, not, than now for you to surrender your heart to him. Ask him to come into your heart. Ask him to forgive you. Be right with him. He loves you. And he wants you to know who he is. He wants you to know that safety and shelter are not a structure or a location, but they are a person, and that person's name is Jesus. Would you pray with me this evening? Father, we thank you for this time that we can have together. Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to come to live a human life, to know what it's like to be human in the struggles that we face. You can empathize with us. You don't come with this angry judgment. No, you come with your loving arms, reached out to help us up. All we need to do is reach out to you. And so Jesus, we do tonight. We respond to you. We ask that you would come into our hearts and that you would forgive us and that you would carry us home. That we wouldn't only know your presence in this life, but that ultimately we would live with you as you reign for all eternity in the next life. Father, I pray that if there's anyone here that doesn't know you tonight, that you would speak to their hearts even now, that they would surrender to you, that they would know the great joy of knowing Jesus, Emmanuel, 
the God who wants to be with us. Now we can live out this life each day in the presence of Almighty God under the shadow of your wings, finding rest in your presence. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. At the end of our service, we're going to have uh, some prayer ministers and some pastors up at the front uh, of our sanctuary. I encourage you, if you're uh, here tonight and you want to give your heart to the Lord, or, or really if you need prayer for anything, we would just be, it would be an honor for us to be able to pray with you. So I encourage you to do that at the end of our service. At this time, we have a tradition here at Petra. I'm going to invite our ushers to begin the process of handing out some glow sticks. We, we like to do this each year. We sing Silent Night together, and we, we shine our lights together as, as one group, as one people. Uh, parents, as the ushers are helping pass out the glow sticks, you can assist your children by uh, cracking them open. Uh, you can also use your cell phone if you want to use the flashlight on your cell phone. I do encourage you not to crack open your cell phone, though. That would not be productive. We're going to give the ushers just a few moments to hand all of those out. Once you have your glow stick, would you go ahead and stand with me? We're going to sing this song together. As we're preparing, I just want to share this last thought, that Jesus said of himself, I am the light of the world, that he came to shine his light into this world, into the darkness of this world. And the great news is that Jesus then said about us that we are the light of the world, that we get to partner with him and shine our light with him to express the love of God, the healing and the hope of Jesus Christ to a world that's in darkness. So again, if you hold your glow sticks and your flashlights nice and high, we'll sing this song together, Silent Night. Please join us.
to thank you so much for spending your Christmas Eve here at Petra with us. We're so grateful that you came tonight. Before you go, can we just say thank you to the worship team, all of our instrumentalists. We appreciate you guys. Thank you. There's another group that uh, does a lot to pull tonight off. All of our tech crew, the camera folks, all of our sound and lighting. We appreciate you guys, our ushers. So appreciative. You know, a, a few moments ago, I was just talking about Jesus coming. He came to this earth. He came for me. He came for you. He changed my life. He changed the direction of my life. He changed the things that I desired. He caused my life to be on a different path, a better path. And if you don't know Jesus tonight, I want to give you an opportunity to accept him into your heart. We have some pastors and prayer ministers that are going to be up in the front. Really, we'd love to pray with you. It'd be an honor for us uh, for any of your needs. And so as we close our service, if you have prayer for whatever reason, uh, we'd love for you to come up and receive prayer from us. If you don't have a home church, we'd love to see you here on Sunday mornings at Petra. And we're just so incredibly grateful that you're here and you spent your evening with us. Would you bow your head to me? I'd like to pray as we close. Father God, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for your forgiveness and for your joy and for the fact that you are with us. For those who don't know you tonight, I pray that they would have a revelation that there is a God and that he does love them, that he does wish to live with them and be with them and to send the Holy Spirit to empower them to be able to live out this life in a way that honors you. I pray that they would know that Jesus went to the cross to pay the penalty of our sin. He covers our shame. He covers all the things that we've done wrong. There's nothing that we can do to earn our way to heaven. It's all because we are forgiven that he was our substitute. And so we receive this gift of Jesus. The Bible says that Although our sins are many, when the Father looks at us, he doesn't see our sin. If we are in Christ, if we receive him as Lord, what he sees is his son's sacrifice. And we're, we're blameless before him because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And so, Father, I just pray that the reality of your lordship, the reality of your love, the reality that you are a shelter over your people would be so clear this Christmas season. I do pray for those that come to this season, this time of year, and it's difficult for them. I pray that the peace of God would overwhelm their hearts, that the peace of God would overcome their minds, and that they would be able to understand your sovereignty and you, the fact that you walk with us even in the midst of difficult seasons. Jesus, thank you for coming. Thank you for loving us. Be with us and walk with us as we go from this place. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you'd like prayer, we invite you to come up. God bless you. Thank you for spending your evening with us. Merry Christmas. Have a good night. I'm